What's up guys, Ben here, Tiger Squirt Self-Defense Tactics, coming back at you. We're going to cover the bow song slash butterfly knobs for self-defense. We will be talking about trainers, not blades like this. So, um, I also wanted to show off, show off my new gear. I got 511 Doug Markita Crambit. New Crambit. I got me a new flashlight. A whole lot brighter than my last one. And 511 shirt. Check out the back. And some pants. So, let's get into it. Alright, sorry I've been gone for a while. It's uh, been crazy, so. I'm about to cover these trainers for self-defense. Make sure you pick up a dark colored trainer to carry. You want it for concealment. We don't want it to be all flashy. Saying here, I got a weapon. No. For concealment purposes, surprise attack type of thing. So. Um, for this video, I will not be using this since you can't see it that well. We'll be using this. Purdy. <laughs> so we're going to be using this one for the video. This, do not pick these up. Do not get these flashy colored. Yes, it's pretty and looks great and everything. But this is also saying, hey, I got a weapon, which you do not want to see it. It's still flashy. The lights hit it right. You can see it's in my hand. But, all right, so let's go over the carrying wise. Uh, if you're out in the parking lot late at night, you can easily just keep it in your hand like this. If you prefer back fist, you carry it this way. And you got it. This right here is great for striking pressure points, nerves, bones, pretty much anything. Now let's get into half hour. So we got striking downward. Let's go into our strikes real quick. You got your back fist for down first positions. You got our jab rabbit punch back hand like this now for our forward strikes we're going to be under the rib if they grab their shirt straight under the ribs we go boom and you got your little ice pick grip jabs like that all right pretty easy now let's get into how to use these we're not going to be doing all the flashy stuff i'm not an expert with these i just know the basics little clip here to flip it open and stuff like that we don't need the little flashy throw it up in the air catch it because you're going to drop it most likely in an incident if you try and be all flashy you're going to drop your weapon and it's going to go really bad for you so we're just going to do these little. So first, we'll start by, see there's a little hole here. Finger placement. So practice twirling this in your hand like this first. All right. So we're just twirling this like this. Actually, it's kind of like the helicopter. But we're doing it slow to get used to our fingers rolling it. Then we're going to add in this over the fingers. See how I got this? Now, see how non-bladed side, always want non-bladed side when you do flips on your finger. If they have a blade, this dummy blade, see how there's still a finger spot right here. So you always want your fingers to be high 
up on it. So when you flip, fingers just rest like this. Flip back, flip. Flip back, flip. Now we're going to add in the little twirl. So we're going to spin it in our hand. That little finger roll. So we're going to finger roll it back. And then we can close. So spin it, flip it, flip it, spin it, flip it. Da 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 da. Like that. So pretty easy. Just letting it spin in your hand to flip back out. This is the flashy little open close move. So it's here, they flip it, spin that way again, and back. Flip it, flip it around in your hand, and back up. Now, for the quick drop forward blade. So when we do our that, I usually take my fingers and grab it like this and clear my fingers out of the way when I do my flips. See? And then this. That, 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 that. So I got my fingers here. Now I'm going to take my finger thumb. I'm going to grab it here. And all I'm going to do is flip it up like that. So I'm under. See how I'm bringing my fingers under it and closing it. Fingers under it, close it. Open, close, open, close. That's all we're doing. Clearing the thumb, grab thumb, put the fingers underneath, move the thumb again, let it close, and repeat. Just a quick open and close. Technically, this is all you need to really know. I mean, you can do a little flashy close and stuff, but this is all you really need. This for opening and closing. Now let's go to flipping it upside down. So we're going to grab the mid area. We're going to just twirl it in our fingers like that and then grab it. So we just twirl it. Practice the twirl like this. Just the the easier way to get to it. So we're just flipping it in our hands. Now when we go to do a drop open, see the outside one, this one right here. This. All we are is we're letting the blade fall out and then we pull it back up. So we're grabbing the outside here, letting it drop and going back to close. So it's like that. See? That, 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 and that. Now, there's another way you can do it. Just the same as that. I can do it the close way. This way. So, finger. Still a drop catch. It's just different than this one. See, I just go up, catch. This one, you drop, catch, drop, catch. The other one is backwards. Backwards. So, from here, I swing it back up, and I catch here and there. Now, let's put this, and then you can go from here, back, and then put it in your thumb and drop it. It's a good little exercise for your hand to get used to it. Grab and grabs. See? Alright. Now for a little flashier one. So, got the spin open. Now we're going to do the flip up, drop, and spin. So, from here, you see it was drop it down, holding this. Now we're going to spin the blade in our hand with our fingers and catch it back up. So we went from flip our hands, 
drop this, spin this way. So we spin it out, catch. Spin it out, catch. So go from here, do a flip open. Now if you end up with the blade like this, when you flip it open and the blade's not there, what you do is you insert this other finger like this and flip forward and then bring it back up to get it right. See how? So if you end up like you opened it up, the blade's not there, you got the other side, and you have to re correct this because you don't want to get cut. So you take your finger, you go here, flip it back this way and then catch it so I was here take the finger over flip it again and boom now so we want to go from here to drop so catch it here you spin it up oh man I did it wrong so spin it up, we can twirl it in our finger to go back down, and then we can pop it open like that. So we went from spin open, we got open the wrong side, and go back, flip that back out. Now we can do this, flip. And now we're going to do a drop spin to here, let it reverse, and catch it like that now. And now we can do the regular drop open. It's harder when you do it slow because you can't get the momentum going. So those are the easy ones. And that's all you really need to know. Alright, so let's get into strikes and targeting. With this or this. Alright, Bob's going to help us out with this. So, alright. Now, if we have our blade wide open like this gives us that extra reach we it's it is still gonna be the same strikes except for maybe the eyes and stuff like this long wise remember we're using a impact weapon long wise if we're we can do our strikes just lashing out like this at the eyes just so that it blinds them and gives them up makes them give up the will to come after us if they can't see their eyes are watering or whatever we ain't got to worry about them coming in also if they grabbed us we can use this the blade out we can always use the blade out pushing up on the nose to get them off of us or pushing into the throat you can do that either one with the blade out or this of course strike under the nose their eyes are gonna water same with the throat it's gonna make them cough right here now let's look at strike wise this or this so uh, you always we always have the ribs ribs are very good striking areas weakens the breathing can even break a rib striking here you got your the liver area right here that will drop a person don't matter how big they are shoulder strikes um, let's I'm gonna go to pull him out and just talk about it from here so all right inside the arms right here Pretty much just like my flashlight videos or my all my other impact weapon videos. Anywhere from inside here and here. So 
all great weak spots, especially if you hit in between a rib, that's going to hurt like hell. Benefits of a impact weapon is the fact that they're going to feel it as soon as you hit them. Whereas if the adrenaline's going and they got the knife out, you use a knife and cut them, they might not even feel that cut. But if you hit them with this or any impact weapon like flashlight, they're going to feel the first hit because it's on the outside, it's not a cut. Alright, let's get into strikes. We got the blade out, long. We got the X's just like the knives. That's lashing. Looking at lashing across at the eye or something like that. Remember, we're not using a real knife, we're just using impact weapon as an impact weapon. So if it's a knife, we're not gonna be lashing at their eyes. Uh, that would be that's in my knife video, so impact wise, yes we can. Now we can also close this up, him under the chin, right here, and we got the nose. A good blow to the nose right here. They're probably gonna give up right after that one. Same for uh, closed. You hit them here or the liver. Now, if you end up in a position where they got you in a headlock or something like that, inside these legs right here can be closed or open. It doesn't matter. Inside here is all vulnerable. And kneecap inside the knee on either side. Frog spot, fingers down, right here. And remember, anywhere in a collar, you can always use yourself just to hit, find good soft spots to hit, like inside these, the V collarbone right here. Either side is good spots to get them off you, say, you got reverse grip, you come down in here, that's going to make them drop. They're going to want to get out of that little pain situation. Let's go into strikes. So you got your lashes, like I was talking about. Now let's talk about clothes. Somebody grabs your shirt or something, they're going to just pop them real good right in the ribs. This. You got your ice pick quick, striking out. Now, my favorite thing, the best thing about back fist is the speed bag training. When you think about boxing, you're hitting a speed bag like da 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 da. Well, that's one of the best moves because. Basically, you got your block, you got your blocks. All it is is a speed bag type of thing. You're just throwing out more. So I got blocks, pop, block, pop, pop. I just turned my weights with it. Block. say they start throwing fist at you. You can always pop their fist. Pop up. Hitting the knuckles. Gonna hurt. Make them not want to throw it no more. And we can hit the inside the arms. Side pop. Boop. Like that. So uh I hope you enjoyed the videos. Um, next thing I'm looking at is, of course, I'm going over crambits, and then my home defense theories that I'm be doing. I'm looking at carjacking. Probably talk about ways that you can uh, add alarms to your door for cheap, like for a house. Just somebody came in, you heard something goes off. Looking at stuff like that. 
different things for home defense and carjacking scenarios, like um, where you put a weapon so they ain't seen it when they're there, and you easily get access to it and pull it out, stuff like that. But I hope you enjoyed this, and check out my little crazy video. Shouts, turtling, trees, screams. The sneak thunders are cut the guns and just roll.